It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Welcome. You're listening to Bucked Up with Sam Buck. Welcome, Carrie Smith. The Thank you. Up. Thank you so much. Thank you. I bucked up a lot in the beginning, I, I, <laughs> but we're here. We're strong and we're starting this podcast. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, too. I was uh, nervous, but I'm not nervous anymore. There's no this is the <laughs> lowest pressure thing. To no, ever I know. I just, you life. know, you get in your own head about things and like so, I do, too. I do, so I'm too. Not, but I'm totally not now because everything before helped. Exactly. So. Well, that's why I, I've been bad. I haven't meditated in two days, but that's why I meditate is I, it lets me learn how to like breathe. Cause if I don't meditate for a couple of days, yeah. I'll forget how to like breathe. Well, you don't pay attention to it. Exactly. And you should, and you need to take those deep breaths for sure. I, I need them on a regular basis. So that's like my meditative moment is periodically throughout the day for sure. It's like, got to take a deep breath because otherwise I don't know who I'm going to be upset with right now. I know. <laughs> or if I, I'm going to cry and I can't cry just all willy nilly everywhere in public. And it does happen a lot more often than I'd like to admit to. But well, you and I talked about this. That yeah, we're very yeah. high energy people. Yes. And the meditation brings me down because yeah. I like if anything happens, I'll be like, <gasps> like zero to 60 yeah, right yeah. there. But I need to be like, <sighs> it'll yeah. be OK. Like it's constant adrenaline. People, people are always like like natural cracked out people have said that to me a lot of times. naturally <laughs> cracked out well that's a lot why of times I, in my life people have said that yeah well that's why we were talking about this before but that's why i don't like caffeine is because yeah. like it just makes me feel like it doesn't make me feel what i want to feel right like i'll take a 15 minute nap mm-hmm. and that will like if you yeah the I, second I, I, you, I believe in a power nap i totally believe in it i only found that recently but it yeah. changes your oh. day like yeah yeah you can go for hours yes. after yes i believe in a power nap man i didn't even really introduce you <laughs> <laughs> You're carrie smith yes. you are a nurse yes um at a hospital somewhere yes and um you are a friend and you are the wife of fellow comic of mine and a hilarious and amazing <laughs> person mason smith i am luckily enough Thank you so much for being on. This is a self-help podcast, which I, I don't. It. I love it so much. I love. Would that. you I ever expect that. me to do that when you meet me? I'm so excited that you do. I hope. I mean, I love when I run into people that surprise me. So I, I hope that more people do. This is very important. Exactly, and I like to interview. Like the last episode was with a rapper. Mm-hmm. I had friends from college. I had um, the only other real self-help guest I've had is I had Sean Vig. Shout out Sean Vig. Shout out Sean Vig. Who's um, a really popular uh, yoga instructor and the guy who got me awesome. into doing yoga. His awesome. videos on YouTube. Oh, I'd love to. I mean, I would really love to get certified to be a yoga instructor. You, That's on the list of things to do. One of the 70 jobs. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'd like to do that. And that's really good, like to incorporate into my practice, all of the principles and concepts that are involved in yoga and just being healthy and making yoga a part of your life, I think is like, if you focus on one thing and that's like going to help you better yourself for sure. If you're doing yoga and you're actually taking in what's going on and breathing and being in the moment and being able to be more present, because then you can do it more often in your life and, and it's easier to get through. You have a job and a life. I'm young and don't really have those things. So (laughs) I'm able to incorporate practices into my day. That's more so like I try the that's what I was saying about meditation. The past two days, Mm -hmm. I've been really lazy, but I've been pretty good about doing yoga every day, meditating every day and then running I try not to run every day because I'm a big guy and it's going to fuck up my knees. Do you run outside too? Yeah, I run outside. Yeah, so that's a lot. That's and I was your, running. I was running um, when I was two sixty eight. I was wow. running three miles. I mean, no, that's road. good. If people can do it. You can do anything. Yeah, that, that's why you know you can't. Your body's an incredible machine. It's it can do anything. So people should do it if they want to. And 
your body can definitely get through it. But yeah, over time, if, if that's constantly, if, if that's, if that was something that you were constantly that heavy and doing that, it would really wear on your joints and everything. But also people, when I was trying to lose weight, would be like, running so bad for you. It's like, no, it's not. You're yeah. not doing it. Right, like, yeah. why? It's, not, it's not bad. You know for what you. I mean? It's yeah. like they try to convince themselves <laughs> through you. You know yes. what I mean? They're like, yes. if I get him to quit, yeah. then I don't even have to justify right. not doing it. Oh, my God. I Sam, I live that life as I am constantly having to like convince Mason why we should make good choices. <laughs> So it's <laughs> like, Mason, I know we're not using plastic in the house anymore. And he's like, why the fuck not? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me if everybody we're. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But I'm um, like, because Mason, we're, we're helping the planet. Like we're helping the future, the children. And he's like, uh, uh, one people, like one person's not going to make a difference. I'm like, yes, it does. We're not using plastic anymore. Let me give some self-help to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I am that person where it's like, I wanted to help every, like I wanted to tell, like, I wanted to be like, like you do it too. Right. <laughs> but when I stop telling people to do it and like do it myself, mm -hmm. like when I cut down my drinking, yeah, I realized that the people who I wanted to cut down drinking around me mm -hmm. stopped, stopped too. like, yeah, I'm trying to get people around me to work out. Yes. Um, it's good. And I'm, I, I can't like tell them to do it anymore. Like, right. no, you can. And plus you can only lead a, a horse to water, right? Exactly. You, it, like, yeah. you have to want to be there. So I, I haven't eaten meat since I was seven because I, fe I felt like that made a difference in, in my own way. I've done that. I haven't told, every I'm not a person that walks around and tells everybody that I don't, I didn't even know that. So I've... that's, a, that's just something that I, I do these types of things in my life all the time. I don't need to tell everybody about them, but Mason lives here. So he's yeah, going to exactly. do it yeah, too. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can't, he can't be asking <laughs> where's the plastic. Like you do you over okay. there. That's fine. But in, in my You're... house, in my house, we're not using plastic anymore. You're not eating Doritos. And like, we are, try, we're over here trying to save the planet. <laughs> like, well, that's all right. Yeah. I can't so, teach you anything. I realize this no, is, well, this I, is, I, a, no, this is, a, this is, a, I'm going to be accepting. I have lots to learn, Sam. So, <laughs> but <laughs> We have lots to learn from each other. That's the exactly. best thing. That, that is self-help. But you are, you're a nurse. Yes. And you, it's so, you, it's your passion because you love helping people. Would you say that's? I would say that's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so, it's easy to do. It's fun. It's like, it's. Easy it's, because it's, it's your passion. I love easy it. Easy because it's your passion. Because if it wasn't. I if guess it, so. Like it would not, what you do would not be easy for certain people. Yeah. Like, uh, no, very true. Yes. Very like true. Like comedy mm -hmm. is my passion mm -hmm. and people will be like, I could not drive two hours to do right. five, three minutes, then mm -hmm. drive bomb, do two hours back and do that every single night until finally you can get like at least one laugh. And then it's, it's right. a masochistic thing. Mm -hmm. But when it's your passion, mm -hmm. it's not because well, you yeah, love doing it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you should, it's unfortunately being a productive, like member of society is important for your psyche. It's important for like your day to day and moving forward, having mm -hmm. goals like those, that's, those are very important things. So people have to have them. You have to do what you love to do in order to make it easier to get through life. Like life is very challenging as it is. So you have to like what you're doing. It's I, I'm, unfortunately Mason struggles with that with like welding sometimes because like he hates that. But I'm like, yeah, so the comedy thing hopefully will work out because he loves that and it doesn't feel like work to him. So that's so I'm so happy when people do the things that they actually love to do. That's great. It's true. And it's kind of like the universe. My dad used to tell me this thing where it was like the universe kind of goes in one direction. Mm hmm but it can be as wide as infinite. So if you break your own lane out, like the universe will keep going forward in your own lane and you yes. can like the universe will give to you. Yes. 100%. If you give to the universe, hundred percent. And that's a long winded roundabout to why like your passion is nursing and why it's not a lot of work to you. It's like I comedy like saved my life when mm -hmm. I was in a dark 
when I was like, I got in a bad hockey accident when I was 16. Oh, wow. I'd only been playing for two months. Oh. Got a real bad concussion. Had to lay in a dark room for 30 days. Oh, that's terrible. Couldn't listen to music. That's traumatic. All I could do, you cut off all my friends, couldn't oh, text so, people. All I could do was listen to people terrible. talk. That's so terrible. I just found comedy and podcasting and well, listened to that for 30 days. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, if comedy can save someone like me, like yeah. find, then that's what I want to do. Like, I want to help another lonely 16 year old. Yeah, because you were listening to funny things. Like, keep, exactly. keep yourself going. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why oh, I feel like it's so my cute. passion is because I want to help with comedy, even though some of my that's jokes really, might not that's be a helpful. That's a really good reason, Sam. I appreciate it. That's but, one of the best reasons I've heard. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Like, Not like judging everybody's reason, but that's a really good reason. Like I haven't heard anybody have like a very sincere reason like that. So that's great. Hi, puppy. Oh, does we go, have, go relax. No, go. he's great. Right, he, well, I don't want him to pull anything. Yeah, over. that's he. Um, <laughs> We have another guest on the podcast. We have a dog. Desi. Desi, yeah. yeah. He's the best. <laughs> Hi, honey. But, um... Yeah, that's the thing is I want to help with comedy. And that's why I'm young. I'm 23 years yeah. old. And in your prime. In, in I your hope prime. not. I hope yes, this isn't are. my prime. Oh, my God. But I want, that's why I feel lucky. It's not luck. Like, I mm -hmm. feel granted this passion at an early age because some mm -hmm. people don't find their passion until later in life. And that right. that's a beautiful path, too. But mm -hmm. I feel lucky you know i feel yeah. lucky that i'm at i know grateful. what i'm grateful that's yeah. a good word for it yeah. thank you that's wonderful yeah. that's a good thing to like you know people should have a lot of gratitude in their lives to make them feel more fulfilled definitely did you want to be inert like because you feel that with uh we just went on a long tangent about me i'm so i talk about myself too <laughs> much okay. on it's this your podcast, podcast Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but do you like with nursing, did you feel that in an early age or when did you find that? You know, I, I went through like a, a roller coaster of things that I wanted to be. Cause like I said, like if I, I have a million things that I would let, that I would love to do that I know I'd be good at. Like mm -hmm. I, what, if I pick a target, like that's, I'm getting it. I've done that with everything in my life. Anything that I want, I'm just like, I can do it. My parents have always made me feel like anything you put your mind to, you can do it. It's true. So I, I and I have always done that successfully a lot of the times, sometimes unsuccessfully, but whatever. Now I know how to handle upset and challenge much better than a lot of people that I know. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. But that's like you grow a lot more from the pain than from the like success. Like when yes. bad stuff happens, yes, you, you do. Can turn Unfortunately, that you do. Um, and that's that's part of it. I mean, the only we have to be good at change. That's the only thing that we can expect in life. That's the only thing that we know is coming. So being good at change is great. Like, and I can pick up and move on a dime, no problem. Like, if we need to, mm -hmm. no worries, because I know that we'll figure it out. But, but that's like, and I I just don't think any other way which is annoying to some people sometimes. And I've had to get myself to be that positive. Like you don't just, you don't just start there. Like, no. you know, yeah, you go through a lot of stuff and you learn that this is how you get through things. Like this is how you get through life and make it enjoyable and easier for yourself. And the universe does give back to you. I really think that. And so I just hopefully have good interactions with people and put one foot in front of the other. And being a nurse is a very easy way to do that. Yeah. And when, you do it. Shut. You do your shadow work. What do you mean? I was. I don't know. That's a term <laughs> I was told. But like when you do your shadow, like when you work yeah, on yeah, your, like, and like that's how oh, you become yes, tranquil. Yes, yeah. Yes. Oh, definitely. Like yeah. You know, and yeah, you develop a mantra and just kind of. But I, I think especially in in being a nurse and working with like tons and tons of people and just seeing people. So I'm a psych nurse too, which is like something that. <clears throat> I don't know. People think is a really weird thing that I, people that interact with me when, when I say that they're like, Oh, it makes sense. But, but when I say I'm a nurse, like, I don't know, people think all kinds of things that I do mm -hmm. all kinds of things. So I forget where I was going with that now. No, but okay. So did you oh, always want to be a psych nurse? Was no, that? Oh, no. How did no, you find? You know, I, I just kind of fell into it. Like when I graduated from nursing school, uh, the Brigham was on a hiring freeze and like just the, it was saturated. The market was saturated and I don't, I, you know, I don't really know what was going on. So 
I just kind of, it took a whole year to find a job. Like I have student loans. I got, you know, I grew up in like a middle-class family. So like this was like a huge, too, yeah. like really stressful thing. It took me a whole year to find a full-time job. Just happened to be in psych. I, I always like loved psychology, like because pe- human behavior and interactions and just like being kind, you know, when I was like struggling through things at school, like with, with my peers or whatever. And, and I don't know, people were harassing me in, in all kinds of ways. Like my mom was like, you know what, you know who you are and that has to be good enough for you because you have to go to school. Like you're not allowed to be homeschooled. I'm not homeschooling you. And like, you just have, you know what type of person you are. That's okay. Like you're a nice person. You're not, you're not doing any of these things that these people are saying or whatever the case may be. Um, so like, I just, that's good enough for me ever since then that's like just good enough for me so yeah because um people will there was a, there's this book that i talk about on maybe every episode mm-hmm. which so people are probably well, annoyed good. but it's called the war <laughs> of art by stephen pressfield yeah yeah and um he kind of talks about like when you're on your path and mm-hmm. you know what you're supposed to do when people see that that's why the the farther they're away from their path that's how more they're going to try to knock you off. Of yes. It. Yes. And people definitely do that. And especially with a happy person. Like yeah. I was talking about this with my friend um, the other day about being a male comic who's happy. Mm-hmm. Like I am, I'm yeah, a happy yeah. person, yeah, I hear what but you're that's not like you yeah. can't, <laughs> like it seems almost bragging when you talk about that. Cause it's like this, like who can be the least happy and yeah, the funniest, but, you know, like, yeah. Like who can be the funniest while being the most like? Yeah, but like hurt. so the most, the most um surprising or the most like what? Why would you want to be sad? Is the thing like you shouldn't want to be sad. Life is so much better than being sad. You don't. I, and I know that. And I know that for some people, like I work with people that are clinically depressed that literally have been sad every day of their life to the point where they can't live anymore. And that's just like, oh my god, we have to figure out how to help them move forward because this is like, so, it's so terrible. Like it's just, it wreaks havoc on, on all of the lives that it touches. And it's, 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 we can be positive. There's so many, it, it's so hard to get your brain to rewire. Like I totally believe in the, um, like our bodies control our brains at this point because you just, you get up and you go, we're all in the same patterns and just doing the same thing over and over. And like your brain wants to do as little work as possible, but your brain is the most incredible thing that exists in the world, like uh, on the planet. And I, I tell people all the time, like you get shot, you get a gunshot wound. You don't have to think about healing it it just heals. Like you, you take care of it. You, you maintain it, but you don't have to think about that process at all. Your body and your brain do all that work. Like we think that your brain is incapable of healing your depression. Of course it's capable of doing that. Like we just have to put all of these resources in a row for people and we're not doing that currently. So, so working as a psych nurse, do you feel like we are very far behind in mental health programs and um I like these are falling off oh <laughs> you're all good are they no, but I'm, like, you... I'm like I'm fidgeting a lot so <laughs> sorry good. do you if they fall off I'll try to catch yeah thanks <laughs> do you, um do you feel like we aren't where we should be oh my god we're like light years away from where we need to be currently yeah we're very far away do you think it's a sweeping under the rug type problem or is there <sighs> I think things don't become a problem until they become a problem. We live in a very reactive society. So, you know, we're, we're about to have a major, I mean, we have a major, major problem with mental health and, and people's access to care and, and how bad it has to get for people to actually get help. We're, we're in a bad, bad place. There are not enough providers, there are not enough resources, but like this whole pandemic and what's going on currently and, what's going on just with the civil unrest and social, like just angst of everything, existential angst. People need somebody to be kind and supportive and have a group of other people that are like, you know what, today sucked. Like I think about all the people that are just struggling so much right now. And so no, we're nowhere near we need to be. We need to really like step it up a notch, but I know some really caring people like I teach too. And I, and those 
people are going to be wonderful additions to like this field of people that help human services, you know, the human mm-hmm. service industry. Um, we have a lot of those people. So, but they need to like get here. We need to do whatever we can to get them there. It's not, this is not rocket science. Taking care of people is not rocket science. You have to want to be like aware of yourself and your interactions and, and what you're doing and why you do what you do. But that's because that helps you understand why other people are doing what they're doing. My, um, I had a psychiatrist that I worked with once that said, if you replace anger with empathy, like life just gets so much easier and it, it really does. And so that's exact. I, I am like anger. I don't feel the need for anger. People do and, and people need that and they need to process it and express it. But, but why be angry? I just don't need to, I don't need to have it like in my heart and feel it in my soul. I don't need that. So I felt like I had, I used to, I do have an anger that I feel like I hopefully have been dealing with properly with all my meditation and yoga and Mm -hmm. uh, mental work and everything. But I did have an anger problem. And I feel like it's because I thought like the I was angry at the world, like it owed me something. Many people are. Many people feel that way. But once I confronted that Mm -hmm. and also um, in a respectful way, but in a in a respectful way, but in a way that was, it showed what I really felt confronted the people who had, uh, that I needed to, it made it kind of go away. Like I feel like with the breathing and with the, like, I can't be angry at, if you're angry at the world, it's going to hold you back. So I, so I just recently read this study about like, because a lot of the, we are always wondering like, how do we help people that are, because anger is something Anger is like how people get what they want a lot in our society. If you throw a fit, you're usually going to get what you want or you're going to get some attention in some type of way that's going to be satisfying to you that you're going to be able to move on to the next moment. So we need to figure out how to like, so people that are like intellectually delayed and things that, uh, you know, they have to communicate more aggressively in, in some ways have a difficult time. Like we have a difficult time figuring out what type of therapies will work for these people to get them to be less aggressive. And um, one of the ways is like picture. Ang- so anger of, as like a concept, it's like, if you like, what do you picture when you're angry? Like, if you think of nothing, you can't think you can't be angry. If you, you picture a person or you picture a place or whatever, and you get angry. But if you think about nothing, you're thinking about nothing. You're not angry. So how do you teach people to think about nothing? Well, what feels like nothing, like on your body, the soles of your feet. So, and everybody can just like, a lot of people can just kind of process that basic concept of like, if once you have an angry thought, you think about your feet, like how <laughs> and people do that. And like your anger goes away because the, the bottom of your feet are never angry. And, and like that concept is like, so somebody thought about that, which is insane to me because it makes so much sense. And it's, and it's so simple that like, duh, those people that thought of it are like incredible. And, yeah. and that's such a, and that concept is so easy to explain to a child. Like mm-hmm. I have to do on a regular basis. So it's, it's amazing. Do you think so you do deal with children with the, oh, with the, yes. and the, do you think that there, is it, is it nature versus nurture? Like, are these parents not giving uh, the kids what they need? Or oh, are Sam, they, that's co- making me answer a really hard question. Like, if, <laughs> um, you know, it is both. It's mm-hmm. definitely both. Environment has a lot, a lot to do with it. And, you know, we don't, people aren't necessarily given the tools to understand why they want to have a child, what motivates them to parent their child in a certain way, what makes them do the things that they do with their child. Like, so people don't understand how literally every decision you make impacts this sponge of a beautiful being in some type of way. And if they feel like it's not in the best intended way. That's so painful to them. Like that people, if people thought about if that, like they're having a kid and that's what they're responsible for, a lot less people would have them because that's what happens. Like every little step is so important when for babies and for like, even for, even for baby animals, it's so important. So when we don't do that right and and we don't like our school systems in this country and stuff and 
and the amount of support that people are provided when they have a child is not adequate. So people like we're not nobody's parenting their children. But in the beginning of the pandemic, I was like, the best thing that happened is that people actually get to be home with their kids and like get to know their kids and see how hard how hard schoolwork is for them and and the things that they're actually struggling with. And I think a lot of people realize like, holy shit, like there's a lot of struggles going on around here. And oh my, and how am I going to handle all this when I also now have all my struggles that just unfolded before me? So, yeah, my mom's a teacher and she oh, has thank God been for teachers. She's a fourth grade teacher. And she has been saying that, like, it's like the kids, they, so they had to, they're, she's a private school teacher. So okay. they, the kids have been in class. Okay. But there was a one kid who got it. Mm-hmm. And so they had to go remote and the kids started crying because they weren't in school anymore because they miss it. I know. But that's funny because before that, my mom was saying that, like, kids don't get disciplined right not in a real like not in a like you should never discipline your kid out of anger no it could there are so many people who just have kids because it's a primal desire yes and not think about what situation it would be brought into right but then that goes into the health care and how it should be easy to have abortions and how it should be easy to get on birth control and Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be like a a stigma behind it it really right, shouldn't right and it sucks because it's really just that generation has to die out right. and there's still people be my age or that are in that generation yeah but it just those comes people are interesting time. people that's that's always interesting to me when i run into one of those people like i yeah. have a lot of questions for them just people like have you never accessed any of these programs or like you know it's it's i don't know it's just interesting for people like my age that have that have those very, very different views. I'm very, I'm very, you know, liberal, like, you know, I'm the, I'm rainbows and butterflies. So yeah. I'm like, we need to give people what they need. We need to, we need to, whatever it takes, but as long as we make sure everybody's like happy, everybody's, everybody has what they need. When everybody has what we need, we will all be thriving. Like we need to meet those basic Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We need to meet those basic, just like, food, water, safety, shelter, you know, enough, uh, enough to eat, Uh, like one in three children go to bed hungry in the United States of America. That's, uh, that's insane to me. How is that even possible? And it's not like we don't have the funding. We have the funding, but we put it into the stupidest shit. Like it's it's really upsetting actually, but uh, like in these, these, (laughs) it's upsetting to me. It is. I can cry about it right now, I'm, Sam. <laughs> I'm so, but it is. We'll change subjects too. But it's with these kids who it's. I never learned about mental health. No, I had to. Not go, enough people do. I had to I'm go so out happy on my that that's own. something that I like. I'm so that's why I'm so ecstatic that you do this, and and hopefully those 16 year olds that you're inspiring are like going to listen to this, and hopefully. Get something out of it as well. Like I that's want, so important. As of last week, we had a thousand monthly listens. So exciting. Thank you. This will be released a couple that's, weeks. See, in now the I future. wish I had a bottle of champagne. I wish I knew that before. Do you, you want came. to have a drink? I think I have some like bubbly rose. I would ra- rather nothing sugar. I'll do a <laughs> beer, but I won't do a rose. All right, right maybe. Now. But I'm not ready for one. Yet. All right. Well see, I told you this four day weekend thing, like really it gets me. I also Cause, don't because Mason has that show now on Thursdays. So this has been weeks of just like Thursday. And then I'm just in mode to not do anything for the rest of the weekend, except for hang out and party. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get all my stuff done. I try to, but I, socialize. Need to... I mean, all of my stuff is done. I do need to do some schoolwork, but like, I, I just want to, yeah, hang out and socialize and have drinks and cook on the ground. And like, that's what I want to do. Exactly. I, I don't want to have to worry about anything. I do. That's why I like having this podcast is I like talking um, just about anything like being silly, but getting serious because when I get nervous in conversation, Mm because it's tough to have a conversation like this without a microphone in front of your mouth. Yeah. People get uncomfortable when they get like when I ask questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, that's so 
that's so opposite for me because people literally just tell me everything all the time. Like I'll be in line at Whole Foods and somebody's like telling me about their divorce and like their and their children, like their custody battle. And I'm I, at this point in my life, I'm like, I mean, this is typical, but a couple of years ago, I was like, how did we get here? Like what? I, now I'm like standing with this lady, like at the end of the register, because we both checked out and I'm like still here 15 minutes later, like while she's now crying and like, you really know what upset. you need to do? Wear wrap clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me i was that person i have a face that people just wanted to tell me shit because they're like he's not threatening but then i started wearing wrap clothing and people stopped talking to me and it was the best thing to ever happen you have a kind face yeah exactly so. <laughs> yeah but then they see this and they're like i don't know if i should tell them my life story i think that makes you interesting no you i like being be interesting yeah. yeah i um I remember my, one of my first rap hoodies my mom bought for me. Oh, that's awesome. And it was from a cooking show, TV show from Action Bronson mm -hmm. called Fuck That's Delicious. Mm -hmm. And it was a hoodie. It said, Fuck That's Delicious. Right. And my mom bought it for me. How and old then, were you? 16 or something. Oh my God, my mom would have never bought me anything within the word. The F word and on then it. my grandma was doing my laundry and found it. Because, oh no. like, when you're, you know, grandma's like doing laundry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess. I never lived close enough to my grandma for that. Oh, but, but. Uh, she found it and she wrote me, she typed me up a letter and signed it by hand saying how disappointed <laughs> she was in me for wearing it. Oh, that's like really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, imagine if anyone I know saw you in that, like they'd be so disappointed oh, in you. No. And it's so funny because her best friend is now uh, like a Trump supporter but like a facebook trump supporter where no! they'll go at people and it's like they're judging no, you no, they're judging no, you stop doing that <laughs> oh, they're please judging stop you doing that. that i know i tried bringing it up to her once and she did not like that i know they're just a lot of, again a lot of questions All right, back a to lot, these fucked up kids <laughs> They're not. They're all just <laughs> You get I know you don't you don't expect me to say the fucked up no, shit. So, but it comes very rarely. Rare, I know. Very That's why rarely Mason thinks like you know, so his comedy is like he's Mason's a man's man. I don't know, he is. I don't he's know a, if you noticed. He's a man. Yeah, yeah he is. <laughs> so his comedy reflects that. And I don't always like I, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. So he had me do this commercial for him. Like, and I didn't have any choice in the matter. And I was like told what to say. And I was just like, <laughs> listen here. Like, this is one, like, hey, it's 2020. And I'm not just going to be told like uh -huh. what to do. I'm having my uh, opinion and flair on this entire situation. If I'm going to be a part of it, like I will minimally take the direction that you would like me to go in. <laughs> And I will do what I want with it, but I, it ended up like it ended up being fine. And it was really funny. And, and I think, I think Ani had it on something. Oh, really? On her podcast. Awesome. It turned out so good. And I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll be a goober. Like I usually am for you. I suppose I just don't usually do it on camera. So I, I was like, I was actually very nervous about it. So I ended up like, I got into a big fight with him, but it was just because I was really nervous and I didn't want to do it. So I like dragged my feet. And I was you did a great like, job. It was awesome. <laughs> I was like, everyone I was like, okay, listening. That's it. Ani, my producer. Ani Moose. Uh, do you want to plug so, whatever this is? Yeah. Um. So Carrie did a commercial that showed up in uh, my show. Don't want to die alone. That Sam also was on. I am, it was the dating show I was on. No way. Uh, yeah. I I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't. Cool. Well, yeah, go check that out on YouTube and on Patreon. <laughs> okay, that was it. I thought you were going to give a better plug. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just well, go check it out. The, the commercial that Carrie did was great. And awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. I'm getting, now I have to leave my own pod. This is now your podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Fucked up with Carrie Smith. <laughs> awesome. So these fucked up kids. No, but they, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing you back to tears. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, but it doesn't take much. No one ever taught me um, mental health. I had to learn yeah. it. And I'm very lucky I learned it 
at a young age. Cause mm-hmm. I think of myself as learning it too late, mm-hmm. but there's people who are 40, 50 who would never learn it. It's people who die and never learn it. Right. And it's like, Oh, there's things you can do that. Yes. Help you like people. Right. People now in this world think if it's not in your hand or you can't like look it up, it's not mm-hmm. real, but you can put work into something. Right. I remember, I don't know who said this, Mm -hmm. but it was like, we don't build like structures that take multi-generations anymore because all the architects want to see their creations come to fruition. But in the past, when they built these amazing pieces of, you know, architecture, Mm -hmm. it took generations because the architect realized that wasn't his life. It was what would come from the future. Right. I love that. And that's how I feel about working out, meditation, yoga. It's mm-hmm. like I might not get the benefits, mm-hmm. but when I stop, I really realize what I miss. Yeah. Like you're oh, not yeah. you have to force yourself to do it. You have to force yourself to do it. But you can do it. You can do anything that you that you really want to do. It's going to be really really hard for a little while, but what do they say like 21 days to form a habit? Is that mm-hmm. what they say? Yeah. yeah. So like It's like what 7 to 3 to kick it or something yeah 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 uh yeah so if you 21 days that's all you have to do i i mean i i was never i was never taught about mental health like my parents are my mom is like you know she's her, she's irish and i say that in the most loving way but when i say that people know what type of like um emotionality some people like that have like she like I don't know like but no her one. household like grew up and they just didn't show a lot of emotion and and I'm an emotional a very emotional person but so like I didn't learn any of anything about mental health until I actually started working in mental health and then and then you just you realize so much like you heal through other people and I'm so I'm so grateful for being able to do that actually and I it's like a privilege actually to be working with my my fellow earthlings like really like just people that are are going through it I, i've i've met the most incredible people that have been through the most insane insane situations and they stand before me and tell me about it and it's just like how can we not appreciate that light like this life and and what they actually have to offer the world because if you can get through that this person can do this person can definitely be like a functioning productive member of society and feel really good about themselves it's generations and generations of no one knowing how to take care of themselves yeah it's, it's like really it crazy. just needs that one like it's you really just crazy. need that one like you're saying there's you're teaching all these amazing people that's great because that's just kind of like a good I talk about like you can get addicted to good things yes, like you can I'm addicted to good things I'm addicted I truly like feel running that. I yes. feel but you can also like that's like a good virus that yeah. you're spreading like when you teach that like because if you teach mental health to all these people and you teach that caring is really the only thing yes. that get then those people will then spread that and it's I really hope it, that that's what's happening and that's how I feel like no one in my family really taught me how to like take care of myself mentally and emotionally. And that's why I felt like a wreck most of my life until I realized it. And then I was like, Oh, I can stop that. And as you see from this podcast, anything like I can try to teach that, like you, you don't like, you don't have to be like, right. Tough. Like you, it's not tough to be like, no, it's very hard. Take 10 minutes, take 10 minutes a day to sit with your thoughts and it'll be really hard at first. Yeah. But <laughs> it is really hard. It's really hard to do. No one takes 10. Like, it's hard to be alone with yourself for 10 minutes. I know. It's incredible what people fill their time with and people do to, like, just escape being with themselves. Like, TV and scrolling and all of this, like, stuff mm-hmm. that people just, like, just sit with yourself. Notice what your thoughts are. And then you can fix them if they're a problem. Like that's all you have to do is just recognize what you're thinking about. And then if that's what you want to think about or not, if you don't want to think about it, you don't have to, you can literally just think about something else. You just have to focus on that, that, that thing. And it's very difficult to do. I have a very hard time focusing. 
how can you focus with everything that's going on in the world, especially when you want to take everything in with your phone? Yeah. Like, like it's so hard to focus. I, like even getting through schoolwork, I, I know why people are on Adderall because as an adult, like, and being able to multitask and like that, making me a successful person in life is having 5,000 things going on at the same time and managing all of them at the same time. And that's just the type of person that I've always been. But that is like, Oh, I, I need a deep breath because I know that everything's going to be fine because I'm fine mm -hmm. and I'm managing it and I trust myself, but it's hard when other people like come into that equation for me, that's like something mm -hmm. that I work on with myself. It's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta trust that they can do it too. Yeah. Or just not care about it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and so depending on the situation, you could do either one, but everyone's on their own path and the universe mm -hmm. gives you omens to your own path, but that doesn't mean everyone else has their own omens, but then you think like you, re you think it affects you, but it doesn't like, right. Right. You think that other people like are thinking about you and they're not exactly like you're yeah. focused on a moment in time. Those people are focused on what they're having for dinner. And that's just like how you have to think about everything when you start to like, oh, I, I've struggled with being self-conscious and self-esteem issues and things. And, and so once you stop thinking that the world revolves around you, because it literally doesn't like, it's so much easier to walk through it. Cause it's like, if they notice or not, they probably notice because that's something that they identify with in themselves that either they don't like or whatever, because I'm not trying to disrupt any anything like I'm just trying to get from here to there and have a smile on my face while I'm doing it and like hopefully laughter that's yeah. what I want to be doing making people feel good about themselves like just having a ball that's all I'm trying to do I remember looking at past friendships past relationships and realizing the things that the person did that angered me the most that I'd like take out on them mm -hmm. were things that I didn't like about myself. And that sounds so cliche when you say it out loud, but you kind of have to it's like, true though. You have to like deal, you know, it has to, yeah, like, it's so it's, it's really you true. In the face and then yeah. realize that like, Oh, okay. Like that's what I, I mean. It's not rocket science. Exactly. Not. We're always, <laughs> even if you're in a relationship with that person, friendship, whatever, mm -hmm. you're still on your own path. Like right. you have to, it's right. You're still growing your paths are it's right yeah but no one teaches you about any I know, of this stuff i know and 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 it's this easy it's this easy to teach people that like this is these are all things that you have control over you all you have control over yourself mm -hmm. that's the only thing you have control over so and people ask me um I don't have a successful podcast at all. I really don't. <laughs> I don't like, I really well, don't. don't. I don't, but people, I just am saying that to say that people will ask me who are starting out a podcast. Like, like, what do you like? How do you do it? Mm -hmm. And first I have to get a, give a shout out to Irish and Ani. Cause I would not be able yeah. to do it. Outsource one yeah. outsource the yep. stuff you don't want to do. Yep. But two, I don't do it for anyone. Right. I want to have a, everyone I talk to. I want to talk to right. like you. Thank I want to talk to. I don't care if five people listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> who cares? Because I then yeah. I've learned from this conversation. Yeah. I've built a stronger friendship from this conversation. Yeah, definitely. And there's nothing to lose from like there's right, nothing no. to lose. And then I can look back in 10 years. Mm -hmm and be like, that's what I was thinking. Right. Maybe it's changed. Maybe it's different, right, but right. I hope that I'm looking back on this. I'm hoping that they're proud. He's proud of the path that I'm on. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Oh my God. Of course. That's like, that's definitely what will happen. Yeah. I mean, your intentions are so important and, I, and like, sometimes I, I don't know. I, I think that like, sometimes I struggle with saying that like all good intentions are okay uh, because I, I feel like people feel some type of way about that like but I do feel like if it's it's if it's really well intended and people are willing to like apologize if it doesn't go the way that they well intended and learn from that experience then then that's you know it was well intended like people are really trying to do their best I do feel that people think that they're trying to do their best every day so when it turns out like shit like that's really disappointing and unfortunately, people are in situations that make it really difficult to just put one foot in front of the other 
because of our economy and, and, and things like that, you know, and, and the lack of resources and stuff. So it does make it really hard for people to do. And there are a lot of steps that you have to take, but you can take all of those steps with the proper resources, which I understand are lacking. And that's what makes me so sad because that's, I mean, we need to, that's, that's all it takes is some resources, but this is as easy as it is. It's these mm -hmm. simple concepts. Think about the soles of your feet when you're angry and just recognize like that you have so much more control over your life than you think that you do. Mm -hmm. And your brain is so incredible. Like you can change your thoughts. If you just think about changing them, millions of people can teach that pretty easily. Yes. And we were talking, <laughs> we were talking about power naps. Yeah. Oh yeah. This power is, naps are this fantastic. Is, wait, but this is, I, I, there is yeah, a connection. I believe in power there is naps. a connection. I don't think I had to teach myself to power nap mm -hmm. because the second I tried to fall asleep during the day, it's those thoughts that yeah. like you can't, but it's just your thoughts. You right. can deal with your right. own head. Like if you just sit there, mm -hmm. you're not going to explode. Right. Count sheep but you feel like you're going to explode. <laughs> I, I like know. It it's sometimes debilitating. feels it's like you're going to explode. It's debilitating for people. It's debilitating for people. That's, I, I mean, I've worked inpatient psychiatry. People are literally in crisis because they can't, they haven't been able to sleep in five years. Like, you know, like they haven't slept in an exorbitant amount of time and they're just literally like clinging onto life, just putting one foot in their body on autopilot, controlling all of it. And they're giving actions. them drugs instead of and, teaching them proper. Yeah. And uh, well, that's a, that's another issue that I could go on a whole tangent about, but, um, you know, helping and, and they're in crisis, like they're in the hospital there and, and yes, they need medication at that point. And uh, because their brains are so wired to, to not be able to think about something else. But if you sit there and every single time you think your brain wanders to a thought and you bring it back to your breath and it goes to a thought and you bring it back to your breath, even if, even if you have to do that like 7,000 times, hopefully tomorrow night, you only have to do it 6,000, 6, you know, 6,000, whatever. I want to shout out the app Headspace. Yeah, definitely. Headspace changed my life. Definitely. Honestly, that anyone listening who wants to like, who wants resource. to get into meditation, mm -hmm. it's for the first, the first couple levels are free. Yeah, wonderful. Resource. And I used to use those. I finally paid for it because it, mm -hmm. it changed my life. That's like, great. It That's teaches great you hear. how to breathe and meditate. That's and it's great. so simple. Mm hmm. It's hard, but it's do five hard. minutes a day. It is hard. It's really hard. People ask I have me, difficulty meditating. It's yeah. really hard. People ask me how to get into running. And it's like, I used to run 10 minutes a day. Yeah. Do you know how e 10 minutes yeah. feel? You feel like an idiot running 10 <laughs> minutes. You really do. No you way. End. Like, go ahead. Run 10 minutes. But then minutes. Like, now that's... I can go. I did five. I do four or five miles every day now. Yeah, almost incredible. every day that I run. Incredible. Five, six days a week. Five, and it's you start off small. You don't go to the gym and lift for an hour. You don't put on the heaviest weights and you have to start small. It's all people think they can jump in at the top level. They think they can go up on stage and do an hour of stand up. Right. No. Right. It takes four years to get 10 small, minutes. Small, attainable, measurable goals. Yes. No one teaches that shit. I know. It's like, so, why isn't it's that so a club? It's, it's so simple. It's so easy. It's but that's why I think podcasts are so amazing is because that's what taught me. And I think it is teaching people mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a thing to do. Like, yeah, it's, it's just listening to people talk and hope figure things out right. is way better than using your attention span on movies or TV right. shows where I do love watching TV and movies, but mm -hmm. it's you're not thinking. Really. Right. Right. No. And that's, and that is my intention as a nurse always is to help you help like open those innate healing centers of your brain to just know, like, you got this. Cause I, I, I believe in you. I really do. Like, I believe that you can do this. I'm here to support you. I know all of the, I, I know all these tips to give you and I've done them for myself. So like, I know that they work. So if you're willing to go on this journey with me, I'm happy to take you. Like, I can't wait to do private practice. I'm so excited about it. It's going to be so good. You can't, yeah. I, you can't teach, they know that you've done it. Like, I'm not yes. going to tell anyone to do something that I haven't done. Right. I, ho I hope that they get that. And I, I hope that like 
I mean, I genuinely do. I, I, I would like to help you if you, if you'll let me, you have to engage in the process. Like you do have to want to help yourself, but even if you're just open to it, and even if you just think that like, that gives you a little bit of hope that like, maybe there is something, or maybe there is a person that believes that this is really going to help, for, help in it for me. And I'm going to be able to like make a step forward because a lot of people get in this mode because, because of the way that things are like, they don't, they have never gotten well. And it's been so long. Like people are sick for years and years. Some people, they don't even have the right diagnosis for like 10 years at this point. Like, so there's, they're wired to suffer, like just everything that's so automatic. And like, so it just, it just takes that little bit of hope and like, and we just have to do a lot of work. And I had a friend who was depressed his whole life and he was on antidepressants for so long. And that made, he cut it. Like once you cut that out, yeah. Like they, it makes the problem worse. It's like, if you take a lot of a leave, it's going to make your joints worse. Like right. you can't. Right. So like your thing, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to state this like eloquently or, or probably factually. So bear with me, but like your neurons in your brain, you have um, your synaptic cleft and like the way that you transmit messages and you communicate in your body and your brain and everything like knows what to do is that you have these neurotransmitters. And so when you're putting more neuro, when you're saturating neurotransmitters, you're, you're, you don't have to make as many of them because your body adapts because it's incredible. And your brain is understanding like, oh, I have to do less work. So that's what I'm going to do. Like there's this phrase about neurotransmitters, which is kind of dorky, like what goes up must come down. Like, you know, there's, if, if we're going to stack it, it's going to not produce it. So it takes some time for it to come back. Your, your brain will readapt and it will produce those neurotransmitters again, but it's, there's going to be a time it's going to go through a withdrawal and it's going to have to go through a re, regrowth period. So, and a lot of people are so depressed that they can't get through that period of time. You know, people are suicidal and they're, they're desperate because there's nothing going on in there. And unless you have a support system around you to drag you through those really, really difficult moments, you know, it, it's, it's, life or death really for a lot of people it's and crazy. there's it's illegal to do the things that'll help you i know in it's those really situations. unfortunate yeah it really so uh the, to kind of change subjects but stay on the same thing mm-hmm. you you were talking before about how you um the ketamine yeah um would you it's kind of described that because i i don't want to i don't yes. want yeah sure um so the ketamines like i was working with a really awesome psychiatrist who's very progressive and um, feels similar to me in the way that like psychedelics, I, I believe in psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. And, and when I have private practice, that is what I will do. With, I've never done people. ketamine. But so ketamine is, is a disassociate, which is um, it shuts, it, it makes your brain talk to other parts of your brain. So people that ha- have been depressed for a really long time, have had issues from PTSD for a long time, they're able to shut off different centers and light up other ones so that they can find that hope, find that redirection in their brains. Like, oh man, like this is better. This is going to be better. And if you keep, if you follow those thoughts and you're able to continue to like reflect upon that experience, then people are really able to make a huge uh, strides in, in their recovery. You know, people that have done ketamine, I think there was a study out there that said like two ketamine treatments over a two week period and people that were clinically depressed, like profoundly depressed, su- suicidal, uh, didn't see effects. I think probably upwards of 60% of them didn't see any signs or symptoms of depression for about six months. So that's like two doses of ketamine will get people to six months, but we're eating antidepressants every day. We know that ketamine is, is not terrible for people. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't ruin your body um, or, or the things, your neurotransmitters, like some antidepressants do. But I also believe in the placebo effect. And I know that a lot of placebos have almost just as good of rates as antidepressants or SSRIs at least. And I believe in medication. I've seen it work and people definitely need that help of medication for periods of time, a hundred percent. Like they're necessary for a lot of people and people should not just stop taking their medication 
ever, but there's a plan and there's definitely hope that you don't have to be on medication forever. Like you can use that little helper for a little, for a little while. And then once, once we have all your ducks in a row and the resources and the support system that set up, like then, then we can start peeling back once you're like feeling a little bit better and more engaged in, in the treatment process and things like that. But do you think, I mean, there's no really plans in place to then help those people get off them. No. So like in my, get, in my like experience, get on and then who like, in my experience, I have not worked with people uh, and there, and there are, there are physicians and there are nurse practitioners now that are, that do that. This is their practice. And, and I'm with all of them because uh, it's really important to ha have this mindset. I feel because a lot of the stigma about like going on medication is that you're go going to be on it forever. And people just don't want to do that. Like that's a, that's a grim outlook for people. And I, I get it. Like I have to take a blood pressure pill. It sucks, but <laughs> it's something that I have yeah. to do or else I have like a screaming headache and have to leave work sometimes because I'm just being stubborn. But anyway, so I forgot the ketamine treatments and all of that psychedelics, they help access different parts of your brain and you need to be able to access those parts of your brain. And that's what people are doing when they're doing meditation, when they're, when they're taking a 30 second cold shower, when they're, um, you know, when they're refocusing their thoughts on something positive, when they're feeling more grateful for their lives, like these are all those things that make that happen. So you're, you're accessing the different parts of your brain that you need to access to, to be well, those are your wellness centers, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's, do you think that these, um, treatments are starting to like, Mushrooms were just decriminalized yeah. in Oregon. Yeah. And Excellent. It, it helps with PTSD. It helps with depression. It yep. helps with anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that these treatments are going to start becoming mainstream or? I mean, we're in like phase three trials of MDMA, um, assisted psychotherapy. That's so what, going what, what really is that? well. So basically you have two therapists, a male and female therapist, but that's actually becoming a bit more progressive too, because, you know, the sitter and the, and the situation is so important. Your, your setting where you are and the people that are going to help you through this, like, this is going to be a wild ride. Like people are coming through some traumatic shit, like people coming back from war, veterans, coming back from war, people that have this horrible, like sexual trauma, you know, anything, anything that's traumatic to somebody, which trauma can be not feeling loved correctly as a child. And that has like terrible f effects on the rest of your life. Trauma is, is for, is, is different for everybody. So it's, it's people that are helping them work through that. And so basically it takes a long time to get people that are guarded and have these, um, notions about relationships and difficulties with forming and maintaining and just functioning in a relationship. MDMA, I don't know if you've done it, but it kind no. of, it, it, so you know, it gets rid of all of that. It, it's able to just calm all of that, like those thoughts and feelings and, and, um, chemical reactions that are going on in your body for long enough that you're able to actually like focus on what's going on. Like, how do you actually feel about this? Like what is going on with you? What happened to you? Okay. Let's talk about how that's like not okay. And that this is not your fault. And, and any type of feelings that you have about that, you can process with the person and you feel fine crying and you feel fine laughing and you feel fine while they help you get to the bathroom because like you're there for like eight hours. And then the next day you have, a, I think, and, and there's probably a lot more to this that I'm missing, but the next day, I think you have a therapy session and then there's some, and there's follow-up that occur, occurs. And there's like, you know, hopefully some integration of the thoughts that you have were profound and mm -hmm. you learned about yourself. I mean, people go through, people are reborn, you know, people go through all kinds of experiences when they're doing, um, on like psilocybin and, and LSD and think other oh, hallucinogens, not MDMA, but, um, you know, it's, it's intense. So you need to know that the people that are there are well-intentioned and know what they're doing and got your back. You know, if you're starting to feel kind of panicky, what's the point of the man and the woman? I don't know. I think because like certain, you know, if you have issues with like your mother or your father and you kind of gravitate more mm -hmm. towards certain, you know, and, and there are definitely like trans people that are involved and all, like there's, there's, it's, it's a lot more progressive now. There, there right, are, there right. are same I sex just... couple, uh, same sex, like two males, two females, but it's so, I guess people don't feel so, um, 
I don't know. People don't feel so. Makes they don't feel, feel threatened, I guess. Yeah, they you know? feel more like, comfortable. Yeah, that. they feel more comfortable if you're gravitating towards a certain person. You're, you know, it's you just that's who you want to give you a hug if you need a hug yeah. or, you know, or give you a, a pat on the back and, and let you know, like, it's going to be OK. So there, there's like, yeah, I mean, it's huge. It's cr- like one moment in a person's life can affect them for. Oh, my God. Yeah. You, like, you know, even in myself, you know, until mm-hmm. you confront it, mm-hmm. until you deal with it and be like, oh, that was then. Let me learn from it. Mm-hmm. you. It sucks, but you grow from the worst things like you grow yeah. the most. Well, your shade of the world is different. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 a different shade now. Everything. The worst thing that like you you especially because like trauma happens and things happen to people when they, they least expect it. So you're just walking along one day and then all of a sudden it's like something that you never ever thought of or never imagined happened, just happened to you. So it's like, when is the next time that terrible, awful thing is going to happen? Mm -hmm. And your body like gets you ready to react to that moment all the time. And, and the reality is, is, is you, you may never walk into that moment ever again. Like you have to process that moment and what happened. And, and definitely we need to feel all the feelings that were surround that surrounded it because people are told a lot of times to repress their feelings. People are said, you know, boys don't cry and boys are tough and man up, walk it off and stuff like that. So there's a lot of repressed emotion going on. And that's where the anger comes from. I think a lot of times is it's just repressed emotion that's expressed. Like when I'm upset, I just cry. That's, Mm -hmm. that's my, no matter what emotion I'm feeling, it's just, I'm just upset. I don't know what emotion it is. I'm just upset about the situation and I'm just crying, but I know people for certain that they get angry. That's their immediate reaction. I've kind of, I can go both. I can go either way. Mm -hmm. I either cry or get angry Mm -hmm. or (laughs) one or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is, that's why it must be tough with, with dealing with children. It's like a lot of the stuff that does happen in childhood never will happen again like right. literally could right. never have like right. things with your parents yes. like when you're a ch- like that will never happen again right but your brain still is expecting it to right but also the kind of thing where it never will so you can never handle it the way you wanted to the first time right kind of holds you back but it's just again it's it's hard it is hard to deal with it and it's that's but there's it's easy to learn the ways to right well so also something well and it's it's weird to like talk about myself actually uh, so much in like because i'm like i'm awesome but i i do really love my job and it, and it is awesome to do and i feel awesome walking away mm-hmm. from it a lot and that's like partly why it's so awesome but um you said awesome like six times in yeah that sentence. <laughs> so anyway you walk into a situation which now, right now I deal with like emergency response. And so since I was in seventh grade, I've been taking conflict resolution classes. Like when my peers would get into like a fist fight or something, I was the peer that would sit down with them and mediate that situation. And I've been doing that since seventh grade. So any situation that I walk into, like, I'm just like, this is a misunderstanding. Like every, once everybody gets what they want here and once we figure out what's going on, everything's going to be fine. Because we only see our things. Right. Our, like, because, our, yeah, because our everybody's, our everybody's perspective and everybody's version of what's going on is going on. And then they're reacting to it the way they want to react to it. And nobody is doing the same thing because nobody's reaction or perspective is the same. So people want different things out of the equation. I want what's best for everybody. And so we're going to get everybody what they need. Some people are going to have to compromise a little bit, but that's life. And, and it is what it is. But as long as you explain your rationale and you show that you actually did work hard and, and you're apologetic that you can't make the actual thing happen, people calm down very quickly. Like, you know, and, and I think that sometimes that can be seen as enabling, but it's also like, let's be reasonable here. Everyone. No, because I used to think because of how I was, what I was raised around, mm-hmm. if someone comes in with high energy, you match them with high energy yeah. too. Yeah. But that just, no. you keep going, you keep going, you keep going until right. who's going to break, who's going right, to break right. first. It's really just, 
No, you have to bring the one who cares. Vibe. You have to care is the one the one who cares least, like the one who like. No, you care the most, and you understand right, right, that right. this is how this is how the one who takes us. it personal the least. Yes, That's exactly. A better way Exa- to put it. You're exactly right. Like you just can't I, take it personal. Y- exactly. It's the the, four I agreements. don't take anything personally, and and uh, so I think somebody called me like a bitch yesterday and threw a drink, like in my you know. And, and they're in crisis. They're detoxing. They're in a terrible mood. Like they need medication. And I'm like over here bugging them saying like, oh, how can I help you? And like being, yeah. no, being positive and annoying. And I'm sure I just couldn't take mm-hmm. it. So, and he apologized later. And he said that I looked cute in my glasses actually, but <laughs> which was nice. But Always see like, the positive. This is, this, Always is, see yeah, this, the is like, this is, this is the beauty of human nature. Yeah. But, um, I don't like, I, that's what you're, that's the situation. Like, I'm sorry. I I know that you, you don't know me. How Mm -hmm. could you think I'm a bitch? You don't know me. Exactly. And I'm, I'm actually being helpful. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be helpful and I'm sorry. Maybe this is a bad moment for you. And, and I shouldn't be bugging you with my annoying, cheery, positive outlook on things because you're just really in a cranky space. But I think hopefully he'll like think back on a time where he was like in that really bad space and like, here comes this cheerleader. Like, yeah. how can I help you? Because that's all I was really trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I hope that people like recognize that that's, that's a moment in a lot of people's lives where they say you can help me because they don't know how to ask for help. And, and they take advantage of that opportunity to be helped. So like, you know, it's really hard to ask for help when we need to, we need to reach out and ask people if they need to be helped. Yes. Um, you also have to be able to ask yourself for help. Of course. Like, what yeah, do I, definitely. What do, to, I, what do I need? Definitely. Thank you so much. This has been Welcome. amazing. I've loved this, this so, was much. so much. Fun. Thanks. There we go. Of course. Thank you <laughs> yeah. so much. I w- I'm so happy to have a conversation with you like this. Yeah, was, and I so hope good. people listening Thanks. have learned something. Yeah. And um, man, this was great. You can uh, please like, subscribe check it out and do you want to plug anything yeah i'll plug my my insta which is the dot nurse dot sunshine um and i have a blog that needs to be updated really badly but it's nurse sunshine.com and i would love somebody to help me like web develop if anybody's interested in that let me know contact me definitely oh shit there we go all right thank you all for listening and we'll see you next week bye bye